What is up guys, Sophia here and I am back with another video. If you are new to my channel, then go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can stay updated on all of my content. And also don't forget to check the description box because I always put a lot of stuff in there, specifically my book for single women, which you might want to get because we're going to be talking about a topic specifically related to single women and this is stop having men live with y'all before y'all are married. So honestly speaking, I didn't even know that this was a term, but I had definitely experienced this. So what I feel a lot of women are in danger of putting their self in when you're not married and you have a man come live with you is that you are the prime target for what we like to call a hobosexual. So I just learned this ter the actual terminology myself and no, it is not a clinical or professional terminology, but apparently there is a term for this. A hobosexual is a person and more often than not, it's probably a man who jumps into a relationship in order to have a place to live. And we're going to get into specific scenarios in which this can manifest in your specific situation and red flags that you should look for for signs of I am a hobosexual men who live with their parents and I'm gonna leave my video down below because I remember one time this man and he was probably looking to be a hobosexual he had read one of my blogs and he left me a comment talking about oh it's not my fault I live with my parents and I can't afford if you are a grown behind person it, you should be able to productively be able to provide for yourself. I'm going to leave that video down below what I told him. But if a grown behind man is living with his parents, he should, he's probably a homosexual. He's probably looking with you in order to come live with you. And I can actually name an example of when I saw a homosexual trying to come on to me. And once I actually started talking to him, at the time I had to be either in my late twenties or maybe in my early thirties around there. He was in his early forties and he was still living with all these people. It was like his aunt, his sister, all these people. And to me, if you're 40 years old and you don't have your own place to live and he also, and then also there's other other hobosexual signs to go along with that such as he didn't have a car he didn't have any long-term plan as to what he was doing with his career I think he had like a part-time job and then he was probably going on and off to community college for a couple of years all of that signifies that he is a hobosexual that he is coming to live with you or that he is looking for somebody to come live with and honestly it didn't even we didn't even get to go out on a date because he didn't even have a vehicle to come pick me up or to meet me anywhere so that's how far it got but not just the living with the parents right it's the living with the parents and you have no viable way to move out of your parents house on your own accord and you are a grown behind man the next one is he is living with another woman I feel like this should be common sense y'all but if you meet a man who is living with another woman I don't care if he says oh she is my ex and we're not sleeping together anymore the fact of the matter is that's strange another grown behind man should not be living with another woman and I feel that is very suspect it is even more suspect if he tells you that he has once upon a go slept with this woman before if he is meeting you and he is living with another woman he is probably just trying to pro he's trying to survey his prospects to move out of her house in order to move into your house next one they cannot afford a place on their own also, you have to look at this in regards to proximity to age and you have to look at this in proximity to um, where they are in their life. Obviously, if they are like 18 and they just graduated from high school the other day, then yes, they might not be able to like afford a place on their own. Even though I moved out of my mom's house when I was 18, I'm sorry, I could not. You know, also in this day and age, you do have to have a proximity of where they are. Now, if they are a 30 or a 25 or a 26 year old man and you're talking to them and they don't have any job, they have a part-time job, they're in between, jobs or they can't maintain a job and that is the reason why they cannot afford their own place that is obviously a red flag and I'm actually going to give you an example of this because there was one time that I was participating in a Facebook group and we were talking about the topic of men living with women and this one man was telling me that he was living with his woman and that he his woman understands that he couldn't maintain a job and so he was basically living in her house and then he tried to share 
shape me, y'all. He told me like, oh, your plate, your home must be a revolving door. If every time your man loses his job, you kick him out. And my response was very clear. Like there's nobody being kicked out because there's nobody coming up in here. Like at the end of the day, once you move somebody in your house and you don't, if you don't read their character properly and they continuously lose their job, just like his woman, she didn't lose her job. She's been able to maintain income this entire time. So it's like, she's going to be responsible for all the income while he just can choose to lose his job, be unemployed for six months, get another job for a week lose that job and ultimately that is not what you want especially for me personally um you know I'm educated and I have a career and all of that but at the end of the day I'm not taking care of no grown behind man that I did not birth I have one son that I gave birth to and I'm responsible for him until he is an adult and so I'm just not taking care of another grown behind man and so you have to pay attention to if men cannot maintain jobs and they're also cannot afford places on, they cannot afford a place to live on their own and why they cannot afford a place to live on their own. Next, they don't want to work and they just want to live off you. So I already talked about this in the last example that I gave with the example um, previously. And I'm going to give another example with this because I feel that sometimes whenever I see couples in this situation, there are times when the woman will be working and be doing the absolute most and the man will live off her. And oftentimes the, the female will get frustrated in the situation. And so this will then prompt the man to finally start trying to look for a job job and literally they will go on this tangent of oh I can't find a job or I can't maintain a job so what that will look like is a the example that I just gave you but also a second example of this couple that I knew where this man would literally get hired go to he would either sabotage the interview get hired and then do something to blatantly get fired within the first two or three weeks like it was something blatant where you know you was going to get fired for doing all of these are red flags that he wants to give the appearance that he is trying to work or he is trying to help you out with the household bills when realistically speaking he just wants to live off you now I want to give my personal example of when I was in a hobosexual relationship and this was way 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 back when y'all and once I experienced that situation never again in my entire life would I ever do it because it was absolute hell and that is when I learned that it's just pointless to be with somebody in your house where they are either living off you and also it's not going anywhere we actually went to college together he was my college boyfriend after I moved out of because I was living in the dorms all through college and so I got my own place after that and he had been a productive person he had had a job and he had had his own place and he was living with roommates but then when he lived but then he had lost his job and all this other type of stuff and he was basically and he moved in with me he wouldn't be on the lease which was a red flag which gave him an excuse to not contribute to rent plus he had lost his job and since I was paying rent it was in no he was in no rush to get Get another job then at the time I was working 12 to 16 hour days which I didn't do that every day but I was a correctional officer it was like on and off days which was a lot then he then I would come home and he would like practically mess up the house because he was there all day right he would mess up everything didn't want to clean up wanted me to clean up but basically the roles was reversed I felt I felt that I was the man and he wasn't even trying to play the role of the woman it's like dang can, when I come home can I at least have some food on the table can you at least clean up like you've been here all day what else are you doing and then he would be like well and then he would try to play the man role well I'm the man of the house and you need to cook and you need to do this sir I went to work at five o'clock in the morning and I'm just now getting back at like seven o'clock in the evening or sometimes 10 o'clock at night and you've been here all day and it was from that moment that I understood that I could not continuously be in a hobosexual relationship and this is what I'm telling you because when it comes to a hobosexual relationship you might as well just go ahead and be by yourself because oftentimes not only will they expect you to play the male provider role in paying for everything doing everything paying for all the bills but then you also got to cook clean and do all this other type of stuff and the man just literally wants to sit up on your couch watch tv and do nothing and proclaim that they're a man or proclaim that they're looking for a job and just basically spew all these you know lies or these fanciful tales to make you think that they're putting forth effort when realistically speaking they ain't doing nothing so I learned from my experience then that a man will not live with me until 
we are getting married. And so I understand that for some people that can sound a little harsh, but let me tell you exactly what you need to do, right? Because ultimately your goal should be marriage. I don't care what you what you want to say. I can definitely list my video down below where I talk about where marriage is not just a piece of paper because at the end of the day, even if you're say, okay, I don't care if we're married or not, there are a lot of legal and financial benefits to getting married if God forbid something happened to your significant other or if y'all separate what's going to happen to all the things that you built during your marriage right like you want to protect yourself as a person in the marriage to be able to have access to the financial benefits I'm sorry I think that women need to get a lot smarter than that and stop letting men pound on their vagina all day without actually getting any benefit you want to play house you want to play like my husband but you don't want to contribute to the bills you don't want to be a provider you don't want to be put on the lease you don't want to be put by a house you don't want to finance a mortgage together the only thing you want to do is have me be your man and you want me to live off you and you're supposed to be the man all of that has to stop so what you need to do is a you need to stop letting men live with you right I know I have seen this personally that many people will straight up meet a man in let's say January start dating and being in a relationship with him in February and then have him moving in in March you don't know this person why are you allowing him to inhabit your space after only eight weeks of knowing this person and once this person has inhabited your space it's going to be very difficult to get their behind out so stop letting everybody come in and move in with you especially if you don't know if they, they if you're going to marry them you the only way that they should be moving in your house if, if they are going to marry you and you know that for sure you need to know where it is going before they move in and by that I mean I am going to marry you I have an engagement ring on my finger and the wedding venue is paid for and I have picked out my wedding dress and we are walking down the aisle three months from now and we're just moving in right now for convenience but literally we're getting married like tomorrow like that's what I mean where it's not like oh well he says he wants to marry me and he gave me an engagement ring because I have seen this before and then seven years down the line you're still sitting there looking crazy having this man live up in your house and you don't have any benefits of being his wife and he's just sitting up there staring at you and you staring at him and you doing everything wondering how you got here stop letting everybody move into your personal space to me I personally don't like people in my personal space so you better daggone sure be worth my time before you take it over okay and the la and the next one is to have mutual investments, right? This is what I mean. If you're having somebody live with you and you know that this is going to lead towards marriage, and I had put this on my YouTube stories and my Instagram stories as well. And I saw this because this was before they got married, but the man realized that he wanted to marry her. And basically what he did or what they did was that they started a business together. They made money together. They bought a house together. Both of their lands was on the mortgage. And then, like I said, even if he's buying a ring and by ring, I mean a real ring. Like I have seen a man play games with a woman and say, oh, I'm going to marry you and go get a ring from Walmart and put a little $50 ring on her finger. That is not a mutual investment. A mutual investment is him taking the engagement seriously, putting down a reasonable amount of money for his engagement come on a ring to show you I am serious about marrying you that is how you know that it is real because the ultimate goal I hope for each and every one of you is to not have a revolving door of men up in your face all day hopefully it is to have a long-term relationship a marriage and then a family so we have to understand that since we cannot control what men do we cannot control what they do to us because they have their own free will we can control what we allow them to do to us and we can do that by controlling how close we let them get to us and we have to do that by how by knowing who and who not to allow in our space right so I definitely hope that this makes sense don't forget to check the description box and I will talk to you guys another day another time bye guys not ready for the show to end? It doesn't have to. You can head over to my site where you can read hundreds of articles. And also you can feel free to shop my store where I have all of my products for sale. And last but not least, for even more video content, feel free to visit my YouTube channel where I talk about a wide array of content. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, stay blessed.
like a butterfly.